<laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. You're listening and watching to Sipping Off the Cup on Tequila Aficionado Media. That gentleman over there with the full beard is? Eric Zandona in Vancouver, Washington. Uh, the reason I don't grow a full beard is because, as you can see, it would be Snow White. I, I would just look like a bald-headed... I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, but you have you have those really cool streaks, you know. Yeah. I and you have and you have that cowlick going on, the reverse cowlick. <laughs> um, Eric and I have been really. I, I'm throwing the kitchen sink at Eric, and I love it. Um, we have been enjoying and dissecting Bacanora, uh, mm -hmm. along with some other ones. But tonight we have Uva Lama. Yep. This is Masot Bacanora. And this is an, inf I guess it's an infused yeah. um, uh, Bacanora. Yeah, it's an infusion. Now, I don't know if you can see this. There's, this is infused with, with there we go, some, with, with these Uvalama berries. Yeah. Or as I like to call them, Uvalama Ding Dong. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure you can see. There, there, there. there. See? And they're out of frame. There we go. Yeah, well, there we go. <laughs> um, so, uh, now you and I have had one of these before. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one's a little bit different because, um, you know, it's someone else making them uh, in, a different, in a different manner, I suppose. So here we go. Uh, it, it's tinged a little bit differently. It almost looks like a like a like a, a light reposado. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like a golden color, but there's a slight it's hard hard to say, but there's you get the sense there's like a slight purplish hue to it. Uh, okay. Like, you like get purple from highlights. Skins. It's like, yeah. like purple highlights, maybe. Yeah. But it's well, got a nice golden color. I, I, the whole thing is coming from the from those berries, those yeah. berries, and and I'm not sure, I'm not sure what they are. Do we know what what exactly is that? What kind of fruit that is, and is that? Is as that far as I know, it's a a fruit that's indigenous to Sonora. Um, I, I other than that, I don't really know because okay. I mean, like like you said, this is not this is now the second uvalama flavored bacanora that we've had. And from what I understand from uh, Michael Hurley, who's the importer from Borderland Spirits, is that th this flavor combination of taking Bacanora and adding in the berries to flavor it is a very common practice in Sonora. Okay. Okay. So, so this is a this is a, a common style of the Bacanora beverage. Yeah. That, that uh, we're we're just now discovering. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not too dissimilar from things that I saw when I was living in Oaxaca, where you know, for like my neighbor's daughter's quinceanera, they bought I don't know, they bought like a hundred liters of mezcal for the whole town for wow. this for this quinceanera, and some of it they split they split it up into different batches, and some they had just plain, and some they had macerated with berries. And some they had with this other herb in it. And it was like, that's what you did. And, you know, you guys would walk around. It was their job to, like, offer people drinks during the quinceanera. And so I'm sure they were using local berries from the, the Puebla in Oaxaca. And just like the Uva Lama. Okay. People are using it in Sonora. So, so. this is... Uh, I think the first time that you and I had something you, like this, you you called it a a. This was a. It, it's a festive, commemorative, yeah, uh, type of of style of bacanora. Yeah, and that that was my sense, at least what I what I got from it, both from the taste and from what I remembered of my sort of similar but different experience in Oaxaca. Was it like? We're having a party. It's a quinceanera. It's a celebration. We'll bust out the mezcal flavored with berries. And my guess is that this is not too dissimilar. They actually use the words bust out. <laughs> okay. I don't know. A lot of them spoke Zapotec, so I don't know what bust yeah, out. Right, yeah, me neither. I, I have no clue. 
Now, now, see, I'm getting whatever this berry is. I get it in the center of my glass. Are you getting like a like a? There's a fruitiness, but but it's not. It's a fruit that I've never, I've never had before. But I know it's a fruit. It's not a vegetable. It's not an olive, in other words. Right. Right. Yeah. There's a fruitiness to it. There's a little bit, a little bit grapey, which is not too surprising since it's uva is grape in Spanish. Right. There's a little bit of a grape quality to it, but it's not quite. So, it, has it changed the nose any for you? Huh? Does it change the nose any for you? Because it does. The, I mean, this it's not unmistakable that this is a a, a bacanora, but does yeah. it, has it changed anything on on the? Or is it just giving it an extra layer? I really got just like an extra layer. There's a little bit of like a tea tannin character you know like if you make black tea there's oh, a okay. so there's a little bit of that and that's probably coming from the skins okay uh, where you're also getting the color so but it's like it's interesting because there's definitely like a agave like bacanora character that's a little bit muted underneath this layer of like a little bit of fruit a little bit of tannins so and and you're right. It is to me in the center of and I'm, of course I'm using the the, the Stasso Javrito for for tequila that, that I'm, I generally use, and you're using a, a similar glass, the Glencairn. Um, but in the center, you're right. It's kind of like a tea quality, not not so much the tannins, but I am getting like a like you said a tea, not a green tea. It's more like a like a darker tea. Yeah, black tea. Yeah. 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 Wow. Well, let's let's dive in. Let's see what we got here. Here's. Wow. Really dry. Um, lots of herbalness. It's a little bit spicy. Like, yeah. it doesn't taste like cinnamon, but it's got that little bit of like spice, like a red hot, like uh -huh. kind of thing going on on your tongue and then the back end tastes a little bit like grape jam <laughs> maybe i'm just imagining that no you know because I, I i think i think that was a similar flavor profile that you we talked about when we first had a, a uvalama or yeah. uvalama um you mama you no, <laughs> uvalama ding dong <laughs> um uh, we don't want to make fun of stuff like that, but it's, it's too much fun not to play with words. Um, so, so would you say that the, that the berries that are in here, are they dried before they're, they're tossed in here or are they fresh? They look to me like, like a raisin, like a dried raisin or cherry quality, like a dried cherry yeah. maybe. They look so, like they were dried, and then they they were thrown in here, and then yeah. they yeah, rehydrated. I mean, that would be my guess is yeah. probably yeah. impossible to see it, but these berries have like little indentations in them. Yeah, which to me indicates that they were probably somewhat dried, and then they were put in the bacanora, and so they rehydrated, but not quite fully, because if you kept if you put in fresh berries that were fully plump into them, one, you're just adding more water right. and less flavor. So it's probably less effective in terms of flavoring them that way. Um, so that might, yeah, that might be the case. I would uh, really like to know what, what these taste like fresh and then dried, you yeah. know, because our, you and I talk about when we talk about Añejo's, Mm -hmm. And extra, you know, sometimes you get the dried fruit, the dried cherries, right. dried figs, dried prunes. Yeah. You know, you and I were discussing something last week when we were doing a tasting, and you say it was more like a like a like a not fresh uh, like a dried plum or something yeah. like that, or prunes, almost to the prune. And I really would like to know what this tastes like fresh. Yeah. So I know, you know, it's a it's a. It, but uh, but by the same token, I, I understand why they 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 tossed them in there dry, um, 
because the skins, the tannins, are, you know, the skins itself are what let what what is lending its color mm -hmm. to the to the to the liquid itself. Yeah. So there's a nice mixture going on. So the mezcal has this like kind of herbaceous character to it, which I think is mixing really well with the berry. And so you get that tea note and a little bit of fruit character that's over it. It's really well, I guess, just I would say integrated in terms of like it's hard to parse out where the mezcal ends or in this case, Bacanora, where the Bacanora ends and where the Uvalama begins. So it's just, you know, it's playing really nicely with each other. Yeah. Um, that's just a, it's a it's just a really unusual combo. Yeah. And not at, not ever having had the the berry itself. I think what's going to happen is it's going to really catch on. I, I think you're going to see more and more of the of the yeah. Ulama style. Yeah. Bacanora because, um, you know, generally speaking. Bacanoras are not aged in any kind of barrel. If anything, uh, right. like I talked about earlier, uh, Bacanora is aged in glass. And some mezcals are actually aged, what they call aged in yeah, glass. Rested. rested, but they're aged in glass and then buried underground. So it, mm -hmm. it seems to impart something. Yeah. Uh, they're not exposed to the... I don't, I don't even know where they would bury them. If they bury them in the sunlight, they bury them in the shade... You know, I have no idea. Or yeah. bury them in a in a in a kava somewhere. I I don't. I'm not exactly sure what that process is, but I would imagine that burying them uh, in glass will also impart something, depending on where you bury the yeah. you know the bottles. Um, this is on the edge of the glass. There's this like faint uh, raisin note too. So really nice, really nice yeah. stuff. This it's, I could see actually. Working well, like in a nicer cocktail bar, I could see somebody using this really well as like a like a secondary or tertiary ingredient in a in a cocktail, just to like add depth of character to whatever they're making. Um, I personally probably wouldn't mix this because I'm I'm not a very sophisticated cocktail maker. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of a two or three ingredient kind of guy <laughs> beyond that. It's, uh, it's yeah. Tough. And that's only if you have the ingredients at home, otherwise forget it. Right. <laughs> so, so, um, but yeah, no, this is really nice. I mean, it's just, it's got a nice character to it. Um, easy to drink. Mm -hmm. So now according to the bottle here, uh, Uvalama is a wild harvested fruit of the tree Vitesh Molles or Molles, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and is a traditional flavoring of Bacanora. Um, Bacanora Uvalama is best choice with coffee, a traditional cafe con piquete. So, now I bet, I'm betting if you put this in your coffee, especially if it's a nice, you know, yeah. Um, so, so it's kind of like a, it's like a holiday. It's, it's like, it's, it's a way to, to make, I don't know, a style of like, a, some people are used to putting Baileys in their coffee yeah. or, or, you know, there are a lot of coffee liqueurs out there that are mm -hmm. um, the liqueurs or um, coffee, uh, coffee tequilas, coffee mezcals. Yeah. Also. Uh, so this is kind of a, this is a kind of add this to, so this is kind of like a hangover remedy is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not an Irish coffee, it's a Sonoran coffee. Sonoran coffee, yeah. I can see that though. I can see where, yeah. where this would, uh, now that I've read that, I'm going to have to try it in my coffee in the morning because I love espresso. Yeah. So I, I'm not yeah. sure if it would mix with an espresso though. Yeah, yeah. No, what I'm thinking is like a, a classic Café de Olla. Oh, Café de Olla. Yeah. You know, like put a little bit of this in with a Café de Olla, that would be just probably really tasty. 
<laughs> but I, you know, so I have some right now. I have some really nice um, coffee that was grown in Oaxaca. So I think I have to try this with my coffee tomorrow. Well, now I'm intrigued. I, 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 I have not had a chance to read any of the labels. Or I, I, I know that um, Borderland Spirits are very nice to send us additional information, and I spent a lot of time reading the. Uh, uh, the written information, the the P, what we call POS material, but um, but now that I've read the label, I'm I'm really intrigued to see what what this does to your coffee. Now I've had coffee from Chiapas, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been a while since I've a actually bought you know coffee beans from other countries. Uh, of course, if you're seeing this right now, we're we're actually taping this at the end of May, so we're all quarantined in place ladies and gentlemen um but we've been doing it since 1999 so it doesn't matter um but anyway um but i am anxious to try this uh, uh i have a i have a bustelos which is what the the coffee you get here in in texas you have the fine grind which is an espresso and i have one like every morning so i'd be really interested to see how this stands up to yeah. a really hearty coffee a cafe de olla seems to be um and, I, and i've had it a few times in mexico um, in, in my, my folks are from Nicaragua, so they would have cafe de leche, which mm -hmm. would be coffee, you know, with, um, co um, with, with, uh, coffee in, in steamed milk. Yeah. So it's a, it's a lot smoother and a lot yeah. different than, than cafe de olla. So, um, yeah, and that they're, they're usually adding like cinnamon sticks and, uh, what's the, um, Sugar cone, uh, poncilla, oh, or uh, uh, piloncillo, yeah, something piloncillo. like piloncillo. Yeah. yeah, they're adding a little bit of that, so it's like slightly sweetened, slightly like spicy. Um, it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's still coffee, so it's awesome. see, like something like that. But either way, I, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna try it out. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I, I don't, we don't have a choice, man. This, this. This whole line has just been a brand of promise nominee, and there's, the, you know, the last Uvalama we had was a year ago. So uh, I'm thinking that this is going to be, but I, I'm so glad that they that they put that information in there because I think the one we had before did not. No, did not didn't really have any information about it. So this yeah, is, this we is had not, no no clues. So we went. It's on, different, and that's one of the nice things is you know you. You get, and that's the thing, like with these sort of traditional beverages in these little communities, they're related, but they're different. So that's one of the nice things. Yeah, um, I, I like I, I, I like it a lot. I'm going to try it in my coffee. I think you should try it in your coffee. This is Masot, and it's Uvalama. Um, probably f uh, as a breakfast drink, you know, or... or <laughs> Festive for the holidays. Yeah. This is—it's amazing stuff. It really is. If you're not familiar with Bacanora, and and it might even be uh, a good gateway into the Bacanora category. If you're not sure, you're a little scared. You know, don't be put off. It's 45 ABV, which we've discovered this particular line from Borderland Spirits has been very palatable, very yeah. approachable, even at higher alcohol by volumes. I, yeah. I was so impressed. Um, yeah, give it a shot. Give it, give it a, give it a good try. Uh, this might be a very good cooking, you know, or baking, uh, uva llama, uh, bacanora yeah. as well. So, but that's our take on masot bacanora. We have one more left and wait to, well, I can't wait for this one. This is, I've been, I've been dying to get to this one all, all afternoon. Uh, but I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman out there is Eric Zandona in Vancouver, Washington. You have been sipping and watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our networks. Please subscribe wherever you listen to us on Spotify or iTunes or anywhere else. Uh, YouTube, please subscribe there. And whatever you do, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>